Dominic Mensa represents British gymnastics in tumbling. He has jumped, twisted and flipped his way to winning the World Team Championships, Junior European Team Championships and a bronze medal in the Junior World Championships. He is also a strong supporter of Black Lives Matter and in October featured in a short film highlighting racial prejudice and stereotypes. So I sat down with Dom to find out what the representation is like in gymnastics. So I noticed looking at your social media that you've been a very strong supporter of Black Lives Matter. Um, what is the representation like in gymnastics? Ooh, what is the representation like in gymnastics? I'd say from my experience, very, very small, because, you know, I was always, you know, I think it's, it's getting maybe a few percents better, but, you know, it's always been like maybe two, three, four, maybe five black gymnasts or gymnasts of black heritage as well. As I, you know, also, we also consider them a part of the black community, of course. Um, it may be a squad of like maybe 50 maybe 50 um, gymnasts going to a world championships, let's say across tumbling, the trampolines, uh, the trampolines and a sport called DMT, which is double mini trampoline, their gymnasts as well. So the, the pool has always been very small. Um, so for me, I take great pride in, you know, being a successful tumbler, you know, being one of the best in the country, because hopefully that's going to allow people to see me. And representation is so, so important. I feel like people... Um, people sort of they don't realize how important it is to see somebody that looks like you sort of thing and it's just it just strikes you deeper in the heart if if that makes sense like I've had idols that you know in terms of gymnastics and tumbling who aren't black you know what you know Russians Chinese you know Great Britain but if I had someone that looked like me I probably would have been pulled even more I was already I was already involved in the sport pulled towards it but if I had somebody that looked like me like you know, at the top winning world championships, that would that would have been even amazing just because it's a level that I really relate to. Do you know what I'm saying? And it makes me feel like it's even more possible. Um, so I think, you know, me hopefully doing a good job from now until whenever the end is for me is going to be so, so important for the next generation. So what do you think um, gymnastics as a sport can do then to encourage more people from um, the Black, Asian and minority ethnic groups to get involved in in Ooh. gymnastics very good question hmm what could they do like i say i think the first thing is on us the current sort of black community bm b-a-m-e community within um gymnastics to keep representing keep trying our best you know if we've got world champions you know the likes of simone biles and so on and so forth who's one of the greatest gymnasts ever period um that's going to definitely encourage more, you know, people of our kind and our community to come towards the sport and things like that. And I think just making sure we're, we, you know, we're not asking for all of us to be on the poster or the poster to be purely black and ethnic minority, but make sure, you know, there's that presence on the poster to make, you know, gymnastics really, really seem welcoming. You know, I've always felt welcomed. I've never, ever felt not welcome, but for the people, the next generation that might need that little bit of, you know, bit more of a poor, a little bit more of a connection, let them see us on those posters, on those leaflets, on those programmes at competitions so they can really be inspired. Yeah, definitely. So um, UCLA gymnast Nia Dennis, um, she did a routine recently that went viral on the internet celebrating black excellence. Have you yeah. seen that routine? And what do you, I have, do, do you know what? I haven't seen a routine. I did briefly scroll past it on Facebook. Um... I imagine it was a really good routine since it's gone viral. Hopefully Very it's not exactly. because of the black excellence thing. But I think it's great to involve that. It's great to involve that. And, you know, I feel like people may be offended by black excellence and things like that. Or why do you call it black excellence? Isn't it just excellence and things like that? But when you take into context the history of time, you know, and our ancestors not being allowed to be excellent, you know, having to be oppressed and things like that. And obviously it is getting better, you know, as generation by generation you know century by century of course it's getting better but I think it's always good to really really you know put an exclamation point by black excellence and like I say remind the little black you know boys and girls growing up that we're, our community is excellent there is brilliance here you know in the media there might be you know so many little stereotypes little microaggressions you know in the media they might hear day to day that might discourage them and thinking oh 
You know, is my community great? Our community is great. And I think that routine has gone a long way, you know, and will go a long way to, you know, perpetuating that narrative that, you know, that black is excellent. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, I, yeah, I can't understand why people would say black excellence is a bad thing. I think it's important to celebrate where you come from and, you know, good things that have happened. 100%. And saying black excellence is not too discredit you know excellence in other communities it's just like I say considering all of time the progression the black community has made and the world has made in their sort of view on the black community it's just it's just really reiterating that and being proud of that you know it's not to you know go in on anybody to make digs at any communities it's purely about us and celebrating what we look like and that we're still successful Since last summer, British gymnastics has frequently featured in the media following allegations that coaches and people employed by clubs across the UK abused gymnasts. A group of 17 women and girls have since launched a lawsuit against the governing body and their allegations include physical assault, bullying and harmful weight management techniques. As a Team GB gymnast, I was interested to hear Dom's reaction to this. Your first competition for Team GB was when you were 12 years old. What has your experience been of the Team GB coaching and training programmes? It's been great. It's been great. Um, I've always enjoyed going away to um, Team GB competitions. You know, my teammates have always been great to me. There's a really, really great support network within, you know, the GB tumbling programme, which is great. The coaches have always been good as well. You know, I appreciate when we go to a world championships is, you know, for four coaches to potentially be managing 32 kids, let's say um, 16 training in one session, 16 training in another session. I appreciate that's really, really difficult. Um, So they've always done a really, really good job, I think. Um, And yeah, yeah, I've had a really positive experience. I think, you know, there's not too many, too many things I could criticize. It's been really good. That's good. So how did you feel then um, last summer where, when allegations were coming out from previous Team GB gymnasts that some of them claimed they had been abused by their coaches? Obviously, the first thing you feel is, you know, absolute heartbreak for, you know, your fellow gymnasts, you know, to... Obviously, my experience has been positive, but my experience can't speak for everybody's experience, you know, and, you know, the people who have unfortunately been abused and things like that, they have the right to speak out, and I'm glad they've spoken out. And any wrongdoings, hopefully... You know, the people that have done those wrongdoings can be, um, you know, held accountable and, you know, and punished because we need to get out of the sport. That sort of culture of abuse, it's not OK. I know, you know, the goal is to get medals and but it should never, ever compromise people's mental health or physical health. Um, so even if you get no medals ever, you know, and we we just make good people, that's very, very important. There's got to be that balance and that line between pushing an athlete and abuse for me should absolutely never be crossed under any circumstance. So um, some of those athletes that came out said that they've been fat shamed by coaches. Have you ever felt any pressure to look a certain way or to be a certain way as a gymnast? For me personally, no. Um, I've always known what has been required of me um, as a gymnast in terms of make that weight, you know, and how to look and things like that. And it's things that I've taken on um, personally. Like I don't need anybody to tell me. I know what I need to do and I do it of free will when I do it happily. Um, But I do believe that any fat shaming is absolutely disgusting. I feel like you can advise gymnasts, you know, okay, you might need to shred this, we need to get you in this kind of shape and so on and so forth. But any sort of backhanded, you know, insults, you know, little underlying insults, I've always hated that. Always hated that. It should be strictly professional. You know, banter is great in the gym between coaches, gymnasts, gymnasts and gymnasts. That's great. But, you know, there's there's always there's a line and I feel like everybody knows the line and it should never ever be crossed and if people don't know the line they need to you know approach someone and say what is the line what is what is banter and what is abuse no matter how small or no matter what common it is Gymnastics isn't the only sport to have suffered from allegations of abuse. And just this week, a four-year review into child sexual abuse allegations in football revealed that the FA didn't do enough between 1995 and 2000 to protect children. 
British Gymnastics is conducting an interim review into reports of physical and emotional abuse. They have received nearly 400 reports from gymnasts, their parents and others about their experiences. We can expect the full findings from the interim review, the White Review, in August. Sarah Wilmore, Sports Gazette.